Hello Booktube, this is Johnny. I am sitting here in my main study. According to my diary, it is December the 29th, 2017, here in West Michigan. It is going on nine o'clock and I'm sitting here reading the Bible. I was, like I said, I've been uh, reading the Reformation commentary on Hebrews, Reformation commentary on Scripture, Hebrews and James. This is a series, as I mentioned, I found out that I got this in May of uh, this year, this Reformation commentary on Scripture on 1 Corinthians. I got that in May and it's still on my desk and I haven't even really, I've only read 141 pages in it and I'm only on chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians uh, verses 17 to 24. That's all I've gotten thus far. And today, like I said, I, I've been reading uh, the Epistle of Hebrews and I was reading this verse the other morning and I was meditating on these verses. And I happened to get in the mail the other day this sermon booklet by the great pure English, 17th century English Puritan divine John Flavel. This is a sermon called Heart Barred Against Christ. And when I was reading this, it went along with what I was reading in my commentary on Hebrews and what I was reading in the Epistle of Hebrews, especially this one verse here, it says here that, um, it says, we're reading here, and uh, he says, there in chapter 4, verse 7, again, he limiteth a certain day, saying to David, today after so long a time, as it, as it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And it also says that the same thing in chapter 3 of Hebrews, verse 15, while it said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation or the rebellion. Uh, so I was thinking about this whole idea of hardening your heart. And then... I was reading this little sermon booklet that came in the mail the other day, and he kind of goes into what it means to harden your hearts, whereas here he calls it b heart barred against Christ, how we bar our hearts from receiving Christ. Uh, we harden our, our hearts. We, we bar our hearts. And this is what he says. He says, Flavel says in his little sermon here, let us examine what what those locks and bars are which oppose and forbid Christ's entrance into the heart of sinners. And they will be found to be ignorance, unbelief, pride, custom and sin, presumption and prejudice against the ways of holiness. Bars enough to secure the soul in Satan's possession and frustrate all the designs of mercy except an almighty power from heaven break them asunder. First, the first bar making fast the soul of man against Christ is ignorance. If knowledge is the key that opens the heart to Christ, as it is plain from Luke chapter 11, verse 52, where Christ denounces a woe on them that took away the key of knowledge, and then ignorance must needs be the lock that makes fast the door of heart against Christ. On this ground, Christ told the Samar woman of Samaria that her unbelief grew upon the root of her ignorance. If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would, wouldst ask of him, and he would have given thee living waters. John chapter 4 verse 10. Ah, sinners, did you know but but did you but know what a Christ he is that is offered to your souls in the gospel? Did you see his beauty, his fullness and suitableness 
and feel your own need of him, all the world could not keep you from him. You would break through all reproaches, all sufferings, all self-denials to come to the enjoyment of him. But at last it is with you as it was with these who said to the church, What is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou dost charge us? Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 9. Unknown excellencies attract not. Ignorance is Satan's scepter, which he sways over his kingdom of darkness, and by which he holds his vassals in miserable bondage to him. Hence the devil, the devils are called the rulers of the darkness of this world. Ephesians 6 verse 12. At last were the eyes of sinners open to see their woeful state and the remedy in Christ, he would never hold them in subjection one day longer. They would break away from under his cruel government and run by thousands to Christ. For so they do, do as soon as God opens their eyes. In the same hour that they are turned from darkness to light, they are also turned from the power of Satan unto God. Acts 26 verse 16 Oh, that you did but know the worth of your souls, the dreadful danger they are in, and the fearful wrath that hangs over them. You cannot sleep one night longer in the state you are. You are. Your next cry would be, What shall I do to be saved? Who will show me the way to Christ? Help, ministers. Help, Christians. Yea, help, Lord. These would be the lamentations and cries of those who are now secure and quiet. But, quote, the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them which believe not. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. No cries for a physician, because they have no consciousness how their souls are wounded by sins of commission and sins of omission. Oh, that the great physician would apply his excellent eyesob to your understandings, which are yet darkened with gross ignorance both of your misery and remedy. Second, the second bar or lock which shuts Christ out of men's souls is the sin of unbelief. This is one of the strongest holds of Satan wherein he trusteth. This is a sin that not only locks up the heart of a sinner, but also binds up the hand of a Savior. He did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Matthew chapter 13 verse 58. Unbelief obstructed his miraculous works when he was on earth and its obstructions and obstructs his gracious work now that he is in heaven. A savior is come into the world but poor unbeliever your soul can neither have union nor communion with him till the bar of your unbelief be removed. The gospel is come among us with a mighty with mighty arguments to convince and and powerful motives to persuade, but little saving effect follows. Its main design is to is to many frustrate, and all this through unbelief, shutting up and hardening men's hearts against it. Under it, the word preached did not profit them, nor being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hebrews four two, ah, cursed bar which shuts up your hearts, shuts out the Savior, and will effectually shut you out of heaven, except the almighty power of God break it asunder. They could not enter in because of unbelief. Hebrews 4, verse 6. The ruin of souls is laid at the door of unbelief. It is the damning sin. Mark 16, verse 16. And truly called so because no other sin would condemn but in the virtue of this sin. Third, the third bar denying entrance to Christ into the heart of sinners is pride and stoutness of heart, stoutness of spirit. The natural heart is a proud heart. It lives upon its own stock. It cannot stoop to a sincere and universal renunciation of its own righteousness. Being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted unto themselves the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. Pride stiffens the will that, that it cannot stoop or condescend to declare their own emptiness, discover their own shame, and live wholly upon the righteousness of another. Proud nature chooses the way of destruction rather than to deny itself in such point as this. 
This makes so exceedingly difficult because it involves such deep points of self-denial in it. To give up all to Christ, to draw all from Christ, and to be willing to part with all for Christ, what can be brought, brought to a deliberate consent to do such things as these, unless omnipotent power bow it? It is natural to men rather to eat a brown crust or wear a coarse, ragged garment which they can call their own than to feed on the richest dainties or wear the costliest garments which they must receive as alms or gift from another. Oh, how hard it is to subdue this pride of the heart. Even after light and convictions are come into the soul to convince men of their undone condition and the absent necessity of another, in higher righteousness than their own. When souls are in treaty with Christ, this sin makes the last opposition. Fain would they come to Christ, ten thousand worlds for Christ, but they think they must not approach him without some qualifications, which are yet wanting. But soul, if ever Christ and you conclude a union, you must deny self, even in this the most refined form of it, and come as Abraham did, naked and empty-handed to him who justifieth the ungodly. Down with this house idol, thyself, thy righteousness, thy the righteous self, dressed up like another agag with such spe specious pretenses of humility. And then he goes down here, he mentions uh, fourth, the fourth bar forbidding Christ's entrance in the soul is custom to sin and sin. Sin has so fixed itself upon the long continuation in the soul, and the soul is so settled and confirmed in its course that all arguments and pers persuasions to change our path are swept away by the power of custom as straws and feathers are by, by the rapid course of a mighty torrent. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Jeremiah 13, verse 23. Soap and nyre may as soon make an Ethiopian white or take the spots of the leopard's skin as the reasonings of men remove the mighty power of customary sin. Physicians find it a hard thing to cure an ill habit of the body. It is a great matter to be accustomed this way or that from our childhood. Every repeated act of sin confirms and strengthens the habit. And hence it is that we see so few conversions in old age. It was a wonder in the primitive times that miraculous, victorious, embraced Christianity in the sixtieth year of his age. Take an habitual drunkard, a self-righteous moralist, lay before them the necessity of a change, and you will find it is easy to stop the course of a river with the breath of your mouth as to stop them in the accustomed course of sinning. So I was reading this the other, I was reading this, I might call it my Friday reads, reading Hebrews, reading this old sermon by the John Flavel. And today is a Friday, I volunteered at the library used bookstore. I got a bunch of books I brought home. I have a bunch of books. I was going to show those in a video, but I just thought I'd just share with you what I was reading in my morning devotions about about a hard heart. And so, yeah. Uh, like it says today, saying through David, so long as afterward, in the words already quoted, today if you hear his voice, if you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. So that really, so yeah, so I was just praying myself that the Lord would give me a heart that is not hardened, that is soft and tender and willing to receive him into my life and to rule me by his spirit. So this is a Friday, tomorrow's a Saturday. The weather here is really bad and uh, I don't plan to go anywhere. Just read my books, write in my diary. I think I ended on page, today in my diary on page 1,000, 
146. That's about it. I came in the study tonight to read volume 4 of Gregory the Great, more reflections in the book of Job. Uh, this is volume 4, book 17 to 22, translated by Brian Kearns. So I'm going to read that. I've been reading this, Flavel Sermon. It's on that text in uh, Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. That's the text of the sermon by Flavel. What is a really famous text. It says in Revelations 3:20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now that's Roman, excuse me, that's, a book from, that's from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, 21, 22. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he with me. I stand at the door and knock. So, I thought I'd just share these thoughts, hoping you're having, well, you had a good week, that you have a good weekend, a good New Year's Eve. And until next time, I also thank you for the new subscribers, Thank you for the comments, and until next time, bye.